I think so. Hi, everybody at home. I think my volume's up. Oh, let me turn the volume up. Look at that. What a rookie mistake. Did you turn your volume up? <laughs> <laughs> Is it plugged in? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> uh, we're going to review sections one one through one three today. Okay, that is the uh, that's the goal for today. Um, because the quiz is going to be tomorrow, I, I, I'm going to go over exactly what I could ask you on uh, within each section, and then uh, I'll open it up for questions, and we'll go from there. Sound good to you guys? Sound good to me? Okay. Right. Okay, so um, thinking back to very first day, well, very first day, well, like third day for us, right? Um, we started off by uh, looking at uh, section 1-1, one, one, which was, um, what was it titled? I think it was titled like sets of numbers or something like that. Let me give you a special title again. Uh, yeah, sets of numbers. Sets of numbers. Okay, um, and within that section, we did a, we did several things. We defined um, all of the different sets of numbers. Like we had real, we had irrational, we had um, rational. Obviously, we had integer, whole, and natural. Right. We defined all of those sets sets of numbers. We did that thing where we um, put them in order from least to greatest, and then defined them all by the different subsets of real numbers that we had. And we could go through examples of anything that we talk about here in a second, but I'll go through anything I could possibly ask you, and then we'll jump back to examples. Okay, so um, I can ask you about giving me, um, you know, the the the, uh, the not the definition. What am I thinking? The the description of what set it's in, what subset of uh, real numbers that it's in. Um, I could ask you to put things in roster notation. I could ask you to put things into interval notation. And I could ask you to put things into set builder notation. Right? And I could give them to you in a variety of different ways. I could talk to you about, I could write them out in words and ask you to put it in roster notation. I could give you an inequality and put, tell you to put it in interval notation. I could give you a number line graph and ask you to put it into set builder notation. I could give you a, I could give you interval notation and tell you to put it into set builder notation. I could give you set builder and tell you to put it into roster. So there's all sorts of different things I could ask you uh, within the notations. Okay. Um, I think that's it for the notations. In my opinion, I think it's just looking back there. Yeah. And then we talked about section one, two. Section one, two, which is what we just did, right? We kind of went out of order. Section one, two, um, those were the properties, properties of real numbers, properties of real numbers. Okay, uh, within that section, we talked about several properties. We talked about the additive and the multiplicative uh, identities. We talked about the additive and the multiplicative inverses. Uh, and within that, you know, I guess you should know what the properties are so that you, I, you can tell you know, what property that I am demonstrating. If I give you a statement, you can say, oh, that looks like I, you're showing me the additive identity, or that looks like you're showing me the additive inverse, okay? But you must also be able to tell me what the additive and multiplicative inverses are of a, a particular number, which I think was at the very beginning of the last uh, homework, not so bad, okay? Uh, we had other properties, like the closure property. Remember, closure is that weird one it says, like, if A and B is a real, then A plus B must also be real. It's a closed set, meaning the answer goes back, is also a member of that set. Uh, we talk, that's, That one's really hard to demonstrate. I don't know if I'm going to be asking you about that one, honestly. That one's really hard to um, demonstrate there. 
Uh, we have the commutative. I'm sorry if I'm putting these out of order. Commutative. <laughs> no pun intended. Sorry if I'm putting them out of order. Commutative property gets it. <laughs> so funny. Look, I don't even know how funny I am. Uh, associative property. Associative property. That's changing grouping symbols, right? Um, two plus three grouped together, then plus four is the same thing as two, and then three plus four grouped together, right? I can change the grouping, and it's not going to change the final outcome. And the one that we know and love, uh, the distributive property. Distributive. Remember, that one must always have a value outside of a parenthesis, outside of a quantity. And then we multiply that value in to quantity. Okay. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to ask you about that. Let me just double check and make sure. Yeah, that's all I could possibly ask you about that. Okay, and then we're coming to the, the, the real um, uh, meat and potatoes of the quiz, uh, section one, three, seafood. You know, I'm always thinking about food. Uh, section one, three, uh, square roots. Square roots. Okay, that is uh, what a bulk of the points on the quiz are going to be. Okay? Because there's a lot of different things I could ask you. There's a lot of things you have to know based on that. And, and honestly, uh, I'm going to ask you to reduce, reduce, that's a D, reduce square roots um, and, in a variety of different ways. Like reducing square roots is like a one statement that means a lot of different things. I could ask you to reduce square roots just by having one square root and you break it down. Right? I could ask you to reduce square roots in fractions. Um, I could ask you to um, reduce square roots when you're adding or not adding or subtracting. I could ask you to reduce square roots when you're multiplying and when you're dividing. And I think that you know that might cover that entire section. Right. That's a very broad statement, reducing square roots, okay? Add, subtract, multiply, divide, and that's pretty much it. And a combination of them all, right? I could ask you to reduce the square root by, you know, picking out the biggest perfect square and then ask, ask you to add it or something like that. Or I could ask you to reduce a fraction but making sure that you know how to reduce the square root inside of it to make it um, simplify a little bit more. Okay, so this is everything that I could possibly ask you on the quiz tomorrow. Sound good? If you're like, I got everything on that screen. Perfect, awesome. Okay, um, can we go back to section one one and just start like running through some some things I can ask you about? Uh, let's do a simple, what if there's this example? Um, let's do, yeah, order the given numbers from least to greatest and classify. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do, um, well, I don't necessarily like that one. And I don't really like that one. Okay, I'm going to make my own up then. Um, let's say I've got the set of numbers negative 2.6 repeating um, radical 15 um, 4 pi and uh, 0. Order from least to greatest, then tell me all of the subsets. Okay? Why don't you do that real quick? I do a minute or two. Security, 
Um, if you don't know the letters that correspond to the different subsets, that's okay. Uh, if you just wrote them out in words, that would be fine. Make sure though, and this happens every single year, don't use R for rational, okay? R tells me real, okay? Q is rational. Be very, you know, I, people always try to use I for integer, and I kind of understand what you're saying there, yeah. But, uh, and I, I would maybe accept that for the time being. But don't use R for rational. R is reserved for real. Okay, so let's start here. What's the first number that should be on my list? Negative 2.6, the first one that's on my list. Negative 2.6. Okay, so let's go through. It's real. Hold R. Is it rational or irrational? Rational. It is rational. Okay, remember, irrational is, is if it never terminates and it never repeats. This one is repeating. Hence the line above it. Now, is it an integer? No, it's got a decimal, so it is not an integer. I understand that it's a negative number, but no, but it has to be a negative whole number to be an integer. Okay. Okay. So, what should the next one on my list be? Zero, right? Zero. It's real. Is it rational or irrational? Rational. Is it an integer? Yes. Is it whole? Yes. Is it natural? No. Remember, zero is the only member of the whole number set that is not a member of the natural number set. Okay, so we got this one gone, this one gone. What's up next? Okay, so now that we have to a little play a little uh, estimation game here, right? We know that this is about... 3.14, um, what's the square root of 15? Especially if you did not have your calculator, right? What is the square root of 15? What's it really close to? It's really close to the square root of 16, which is four. four, right? But just underneath it, right? So I would say that square root of 15 is, let's say, about 3.9 or maybe 3.8. And then we have four. It's definitely underneath four, and it's definitely above 3.1. Right? So we can say that pi will come next. It's real. Is it rational or irrational? Irrational. And I'll accept just using the IRR for the word irrational. And then we have the square root of 15. It's real. Is it rational or irrational? Irrational. Remember, any non-perfect square, square root, is an irrational number. And then we have four. It's real. It's rational. It's integer. It's whole. It's natural. One of the common numbers. Not all of them. Sound good there? It's okay about that? Good. Okay, um, let's change some forms. Let's do, oh, these are good. Why don't you do these two? Okay, why don't you do three and four right there? This is given to you in set builder notation and then it's asking for interval. This is in a, in a quad, I'm sorry, a number line and it's asking for it in set builder.
if you're struggling, feel free. Pull it back in your notes. Think, think okay, what, what was this now? What do we have? Bracket, friends, I don't know. Infinity, I don't know. Been a long time since we learned this, right? Let's talk about number three here, interval notation. Um, first off, what what symbol do you use to exclude a number in interval notation? Parentheses, including the uh, bracket, right? Okay, so that means I want to think about it. I've got all numbers between negative four and positive two. Boom, right there, that's my interval. Negative four to two. Negative four to two. And then I decide what's included What's excluded? Is the four in, excuse me, the negative four included? Yes. Is the two included? No. So there's my answer. All right, let's take a look at four now. Uh, I've got all numbers less than negative two, all numbers greater than zero. And I want to put that in set builder notation. Okay. We can say set of all numbers x such that I've got everything less than negative 2. Uh, you can use the word or here, or if you wanted to use the union symbol, that would be fine too, or x is greater than 0. Oh, I, I capped it on the end. Should I have narrowed my focus at all? Do I need to say just integers? Do I need to say just whole numbers? No. Remember, if you wanted to, you'd have to say and x is an element of whole numbers or something like that. So x is less than negative 2, x is greater than 0. Uh, again, uh oh, what did I do wrong? Did you like a u? Yeah, I was going to say that that would be fine. Or if you wanted to say, that's what I was alluding to when I said x is less than negative 2, union x is greater than 0. That, both of those would be acceptable. Yes, the union symbol or the or. Yeah, so if I had said, um, well, kind of like that, yeah, so that would look like this. If I've got a number line here, uh, negative 3 to 4, right, You would, and it's maybe closed dot and an open dot, we would say settable numbers x such that uh, negative 3 to 4. Does that make sense? Uh, an example where I would have to narrow my focus would look like this. Um, if you've got a roster notation of um, one, two, three, four, sure. You would say set of all numbers X such that uh, it's between one and four, but I don't want all numbers between one and four. I only want, and X has to be natural. Okay. Those are all natural numbers. That make sense? All right. Uh, okay, that's due in the different forms. Covered that. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, what property am I demonstrating here? Whoa, what the what? What property am I demonstrating here? 
in number seven there. The temptation is to say commutative. If you say commutative, do I change order? Two pi r. Two pi r. Did I change order? Uh uh. So it's not commutative. So what is it? Associative. Associative, right. I change the grouping. I say two pi, then r, is the same as two, then pi r. Um, this is the additive identity, right? From adding zero to it, I'm showing the additive identity. Um, and then here, obviously, this is this is the distributive property. Three times two a plus b is equal to three times two a plus three times b. Good. Um, no word problems on tomorrow's quiz. You're welcome. Um, try. Let's do. Let's do those three. Oh yeah, we got plenty. I'm still on the old bell schedule. Try those three. I got negative product of 72. Break that down. This next one I'm going to try to break down and then add together. And then number 12 looks like I'm going to try to either rationalize or reduce it out in some other way. Oh, no. I haven't noticed it. <laughs> I heard it. Don't stop <laughs> All right, so um, first one here, negative radical 72. Uh, what's the biggest perfect square that divides 72? 36. Yeah, you could say 9, but then you'd have to go a little bit further in the end. 36, 36 times 2. So you would say negative radical 36 times 2, which is negative 6 radical 2. And there's my answer there. Okay. Again, if you did 9, you'd pull out the 3, and it would be negative 3 radical 8. But 8 still has um, a perfect square in it. Yes? Nah. No. I, tomorrow, I am completely fine. If you're good enough at it, go from there to there. In the end, I want you to get there anyway, so let's do that. Okay, let's take a look at number 11 here. I'm going to show you something that a lot of people might do, okay? 
Um, we break down the square root of 12 to get 4 and 3, and then this becomes 2 radical 3. What did I do? Forgot the 5. I'm so sorry, 5. I didn't mean to forget about you. I left you behind. So 5 and then the 2 makes a whole 10 on the outside. Don't add them together. You multiply them together on the outside. Okay, That happens so often. Don't let those numbers on the outside vanish. 10 and 9 make 19 radical 3. Okay, I'm going to show rationalizing right off the bat for the next one. Okay, Because I, I, I tend to think that that's the way most of you are going to go at this problem initially. Because radical 10 does not produce. There's no perfect square factor in 10, so I can't really do that anything with that yet. But I can say negative 4 radical 20 over 2. Let's break down the radical 20. So that means I've got um, all over 2. This is 4 times 5, right? So that makes a 2 coming out. Negative 4 times 2 radical 5. Or in other words, negative 8 radical 5. All over 2. And then we can say negative 4 radical 5. That's my answer. Did anybody do that a little bit different? Anna, what did you do? I simplified the 10 and 2. Yeah, look at that. What? If you didn't notice that, again, try to pick up on those things. Those are both inside the radical, right? 10 divided by 2 is 5. Oh, my gosh. Straight to your answer. Are you kidding me now? Negative 4 radical 5. There's my answer. I passed all that work. Good to know how to rationalize the denominator. You're going to need to rationalize the denominator. There will be problems on tomorrow's quiz that you won't have the ability to simplify like that, um, where you will be forced to rationalize. But it's good to try to look for those things. Okay. We've got about 10 minutes left. Let's see if I want to talk about anything else. <laughs> Okay, let's do one of these problems. Let's see if I can make up a good one here. 3 radical 2 plus uh, radical 5, all divided by, let's try that. I have no idea how that's going to work. Uh, you know what, let's make this a little, hmm. Let's, ooh, let's do this. Um, Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it a little bit so it'll reduce in the end. Sorry, now I'm erasing everything. <laughs> um, radical six, and then let's put a, let's put an eighteen here. Ooh, that might be weird. That's okay. Assume this is no calculator. Again, assume this is no calculator. If you're looking for shortcuts, don't look for shortcuts. Do it the long way. Yeah. There, there's no shortcuts on the one that's tomorrow's quiz, and I just realized it's a shortcut. Do it the long way.
Okay, this is what I would do with this problem. Okay, well, I guess I can ask you this. How many of you guys rationalized? How many of you guys split up? Okay, so I'll split up. Okay, so that's good. Three radical six over radical six plus radical 18 over radical six. When I said don't go for the shortcut, like this is fine, canceling that out. Did anybody catch that we could have just divided those? Yeah, and then, then it's like a radical three. Yes. Okay, the one on the tomorrow's quiz won't be like that. Just fair warning. Um, here's what I here's what I would do. If this was not reducible, I would start by reducing this top one. You, maybe we noticed that this radical eighteen turned into nine times two, right? So that would be a three radical two over radical six. That's when I said assume that this is no calculator. I don't know if I would want to be doing 18 times 6 without a calculator. I guess you could. It's not that bad. But, you know, still, why, why am I saying 18 times 6? Because you're going to have to rationalize with that 6, which would get me 3 plus. Don't lose the 3 plus. That happens, too. Like the big number that's sitting out front when you cancel, this happens to go like vanish. So this would be 3 radical 12 over 6. Break down the radical 12, that gets me 3 plus uh, 3 times 2 radical 3 over 6. Because right? it's 4 times 3, so square root of 4 would just be 2 radical 3. Or in other words, 3 plus, oh no, that's a big 3. Sorry. 3 plus 6 radical 3 over 6, and that will cancel, leading me to my answer of 3 plus radical 3, which I almost saw right after that. Right there. Yeah, the ones on the quiz tomorrow won't have those fancy tricks where you can just cancel real easy right away. Yeah. Just made that one up in my head. Made it too easy for you. All right, four minutes. Any questions? Any questions? I tried to go over an example of each type that I could give you on the quiz tomorrow. Um, but uh, what to study tonight? Just go back over your homework problems. Make sure you know how to do all of your homework problems, and you should be good. Um, again, no word problems on the, the quiz tomorrow. So if those give you fits, be happy about that. Yeah, Holly. Is there like a review page in the book? Um, people always ask me what pages they should do. Um, I kind of stole that from you. This is the ready to go on page at the end of sections one one to one three. Usually those are good review pages. If you want to, um, let me pull up the book. Um, it's hard because they're not in sections here. I'm not sure what page that was even. Um, I'm guessing somewhere around page, let's see where we're at here. Um, what, what am I on there? I don't even know. Okay, so that's section 1-6. If you go all the way to the end of the chapter, we're going to have to go all the way to one nine. Yeah. Hold, hold on just one second. Usually those study guide review pages at the end of a chapter, those are usually good. Oh, seriously, come on now. Well, duh, I guess I could have gone to the end of the chapter and just find pages back there. Like, uh, well, that's the ready to go on for those sections. But like when you start to get into this, those are really good pages because the reason I like these ones is because it shows you examples here and then has you ones to work with there. Shows you examples here, gives you ones to work with. And uh, and so we would be going through um, section one three. It looks like it's page 76 and 77. But again, there's a lot of resources in your book. Rewatch videos, that would be good too. Yeah. Oh, thank you.
See everybody at home. Shout out everybody at home.